So now let's look at two examples. Case one, here is our problem. Write a truth table for not the quantity P and Q or P. As you know, a compound statement like P and Q is composed of simple statements like P and Q and logical operations like or, and, if, then, and not. We covered those four in Truth Tables Demos video version one, part one. The intent of a truth table is to evaluate every possible combination of truth values for that compound statement so that we can predict whether that compound statement is true or false under any circumstance. So we start by listing all of the possible combinations of the simple statements P and Q. Remember that's how we began part one video and possibly more that appear in the compound statement. Then we evaluate a single logical statement at a time using the results of the previous evaluations to determine the next column. So here's our question again. Write a truth table for not the quantity P and Q or P. For instance, if we were to evaluate this statement above, we would not simply have columns labeled P, Q, and then skip right to this one. It would simply be too hard to move straight to the end. Instead, we evaluate a single logical operation at a time using the truth table for that particular operation to fill in that particular column. Remember, the basic operations are all discussed in the part one video. So <clears throat> let's write a truth table for not the quantity P and Q or P. In this case, we begin by listing the possible combinations of P and Q. This may look familiar if you've watched part one recently. This is exactly the same, right? We write P, then we write T, T, F, F, right? True, true, false, false. Then we write Q going true, false, true, false. This way, all four possible combinations are represented. We can tell what happens when P and Q are both true, when just P is true and Q, and and Q is false, when just Q is true and P is false, or when both P and Q are false. Tip, they always start the same way. So here's our problem again. Write a truth table for not the quantity P and Q or P. Now working from the innermost set of parentheses outward, just like the PEMDAS rule in algebra, we begin by al evaluating P and Q. To do so, we use the AND truth table to evaluate that column's entries for each combination of P and Q. For instance, in the first entry, we have P is true, Q is true, and we look this up, up this combination in the AND truth table and see that true and true is true. So we put a true in the first entry and proceed to evaluate the rest of the entries in that column. When P is true and Q is false, we note from the P and Q truth table that P and Q would be false, <clears throat> right? Because P and Q are not both true. Also, when P is false and Q is true, then P and Q is false. Again, we can look at the table. Um, or we can think, well, Q is true, but they're not both true since P is false, so P and Q would be false. If P is false and Q is false, again, the table will give us, or we can use our reasoning to tell that P and Q is false. So we've just gotten started on writing the truth table for not the quantity P and Q or P. Notice we do the part in the parentheses first, just like in algebra. We do the quantity first. Now we're going to evaluate the little not. <clears throat> Having evaluated the P and Q, we take the next operation. Note that it's not left to right. We're using PEMDAS. So we need to evaluate the not next and evaluate the not P and Q column. To determine each of these entries, we simply negate each of the entries in the P and Q column. Notice we're not really going to worry about the P, and P column or the Q column. I'm only going to look here at the P and Q column. The not P and Q is going to be, I'm going to take this one and change it to the other. So when P and Q is true, not P and Q is false. When P and Q is false, not P and Q is true. When P and Q is false, not P and Q is true. And when P and Q is false, not P and Q is true. Remember, all we're doing is looking at column three here 
and changing each entry to the other one. So if it's true, we make it false, as in the first row, and if it's false, we make it true, as in the other three rows. Now we'd like to write um, a truth table, continuing to s finish up, write a truth table for not P and Q or P. We've got to do the or P next. Finally, we use the or truth table plus the entries for not P and Q we determined in column four. And P, that's what we determined in column one, to evaluate the final column, not P and Q or P. Let's scroll up a little bit. For instance, in the first entry, we have already determined that <clears throat> not P and Q is false, so we're looking right here. We also know if we hop over to the P column that on the first row, that is true. So we consult the OR truth table, which tells us that false or true is true. So let's do that again. We're getting the false because not P and Q is false. We're getting the OR because right here we have the OR symbol. We're getting the true because <clears throat> the P here, P over here on the first row is true. And we know from the table that false or true is true. So we put a true here. We fill in the rest of the column in the same manner. True, notice I hop over to the P here, or true is true. And true, hopping over, or false is true. And lastly, true or false is true. <clears throat> You might notice that here we got all of the last column was true. This is a special situation. Note that in this particular statement, it's always true regardless of the values of the simple statements. Such a statement is called a tautology. That's a special name for that. If we were evaluating the truth table of an argument, the fact that this argument was always true would prove that the argument was valid. Next, we'll do the second example.